Yes, we can hear you. I'll pass right over to you then, Steve. Cheers. Thanks very much. Um, it's great to be able to speak with you this morning and to have had such encouraging words during worship. And um, although David and Eileen knew I was going to be speaking from Joshua, they didn't realize, I don't think, the significance of the be strong and courageous that's going to come out in, in the preach today. And uh, the scripture about the, the church, the gates of hell will not prevail, uh, just so encouraging. So it's great to be uh, able to share this word with you this morning. I'm conscious it's already 12 o'clock. Um, so um, I will do my best to not go on for too long. Um, and I was hoping that we'd get to a song at the end. We shall have to see how we do with that. But um, So I'm going to be speaking from Joshua and the first nine verses of chapter one. Um, now, I feel God has given me this to share as a prophetic and pastoral word. Now, with prophecy, you always weigh it. So in some ways, I think we should always weigh what's preached anyway. Um, but I would encourage you to hopefully hear this in, in the heart that I want to bring it. Um, I feel it's a word for the church, um, not just for Kendall, but for churches to consider at this time when so much is going on in the world. So I just bring that as a bit of a preamble and um, we'll, we'll now get into to what I've got to bring. So just to set the scene a little bit, um, the children of Israel are on the edge of the promised land. They've got there, but they haven't entered it. And um, a little bit of background here about Joshua and Caleb. Now, this was on the first spying adventure that they went on, not the second one that we had so beautifully done this morning. But it says this of them um, in Numbers 14, verses 8 to 10. It says that Joshua and Caleb uh, had brought back a really good report of the land. They had been very positive about the fact that, yes, we can take Jericho. It's filled with milk and honey. It's a great place to be. But the other spies, they just, well, they doubted God's promise, really. And they just didn't want to go for it. They were frightened. They'd seen the people that lived there. Um, they, they said they were giants. And they, they, we looked like grasshoppers to them. How did they know what they thought? You know, they didn't really know that. They they thought themselves they looked like grasshoppers, but they actually reported that we're just grasshoppers in their eyes. And that they bring back a really bad report to Joshua and, um, and to the people. And the people are terrified. And they say, why did we come out of Egypt? Why did we leave? Let's go back. Let's get another leader. That sounds familiar at the moment in America, doesn't it? Let's get a different leader. It'll be great if we have another one. And we'll go back. And God is not well pleased with them. But this is what it says in, in Numbers 14, verses 8 to 10. If the Lord delights in us, this is um, Joshua and Caleb, then he will bring us into the land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. And all the congregation said, let's stone them. Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before all of the children of Israel. What a thing to do, to just to reject all of God's promises. They've seen all these things happen that God has done for them to get them this far. And yet they just want to get rid of Joseph, uh, Joshua and Caleb. Moses intercedes and, and prays and calls upon the Lord. And to some extent, God relents what he was going to do. Because he says, that's it. You're going to just before 40 more years of wandering around. And everybody of 20 years and above will not enter the land. They all perish. And the spies that brought back the bad report, they, they perish from the plague almost immediately. Now, at this time, Caleb is around 80 years old. And Joshua is about 101. And the next 10 years of Joshua's life is quite an amazing 10 years. For Joshua, it's the last 10 years of his life. But what he achieves in those 10 years is quite outstanding. 
And as we go through this, let's, let's be asking God, what can we achieve in the next 10 years, even if we have got great opposition? So that's a bit of background to where we're coming from. Uh, but I'm re- going to read now from Joshua chapter 1 and verses 1 to 9. And it says this, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people of Israel, to the land which I am giving them, to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river of Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. What a promise. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you should divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you do not turn to it from the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make your ways prosperous and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wow. What's the, what an amazing thing to hear from the Lord. I'm going to pick out on a few things here just to emphasize on my notes. I've he- put them all in red. First, it says, my servant is dead. That's a key point we're going to look at. Arise is another one. Giving every place and be strong and of good courage. That's what we're going to be looking at today. So firstly, Moses, my servant, is dead. Um, Moses had, um, back in the end, tail end of Deuteronomy, had laid hands on Joshua and had passed the baton on as it were it says this now that joshua the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom for moses had laid his hands on him so the children of israel heeded him and did as the lord had commanded moses firstly i believe we need to see that this was a real time of change moses my servant is dead moses had led these people for years and years and now It was going to be somebody else. It was clear that Joshua was anointed by God to take the task on. But Moses was dead. A real time of change. It wasn't just a temporary thing. Moses was gone. It was a new day, a new time. For Joshua, this was going to be the new normal. Moses is dead. Here we go, Josh. Our world is changing. It's there are, there are pivotal moments in history. And this morning, we quite rightly remembered um, those who had given their lives during two world wars and other conflicts since that time. And approximately, it says, I looked this up, about 450 people died from the UK, 380, 450,000 rather, and 383 of those were um, military people. We lost so many people. In total, the world lost in the Second World War, 24 million people died, of which 10.7 million were military people. Huge change, a huge shift after the Second World War. And 75 years on this morning, we remember the change. There became a new normal after the war. There was pre-war, and after war. Now, 
in Guernsey, the, the island that we came, come from was occupied by the Germans and they built fortifications all the way around it. You can see them today, they're still there. Bunkers and lookout points and gun emplacements. They're all there. Before 1939, they weren't there. After 1945, when those who were evacuated went back, it became the new normal. I was brought up, I never, I've never seen anything different in Guernsey. They were there. All these things that were never there before, they were always there for me. And we're coming into a time when perhaps those who are much younger are going to grow up with a new normal. And that's something that maybe we're going to have to adjust to whenever that time comes. So far with, with COVID, there have been 48 million cases across the world. This is, I looked at this on November the 5th. This is the figures for then. And 1,225,000 deaths. And in the UK yesterday, it's just under 49,000 people have died. This can't all happen and then we go back to normal afterwards. It's going to be a new normal. Life is going to be different. Moses was dead. Joshua was going to go ahead with something different, something new. They will be normal again, but maybe it will never be quite the same. Just watching the American election at the moment, you think, my word, what's going on in this world? We have a, a man who is not wanting to relinquish his point of power when he's been clearly beaten by somebody else. And there's just no grace in the way he's handling himself. So we have this weird situation going on in America. We have Brexit about to happen here. And then there are all the fi financial implications of what happens after COVID as well. We're gonna be living in a slightly different world. Even when we get to a new normal, it's gonna feel a bit different. We're living through times of real change. At some point, it will feel slightly normal again, I do believe. But here we are looking for what is gonna be our future. Joshua was being called and commissioned to take the land. I believe God is calling us and preparing us to take the land also. It's not a time where we slow down. It's a time where we arise to the challenge. So Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, Joshua is told, arise. How do we arise, particularly at this time? Well, let's look at what Joshua was told firstly. In verse 8 of what I read out, it says this, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you should meditate upon it night and day, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. We need to fill our souls at this time with the truth of God's word, to meditate on what God says. Not what the politicians are saying or the professionals are saying. Obviously, we mustn't ignore what they're saying. I'm not saying that. But actually, who do we put our trust in? We put our trust in the Lord. We meditate on his word, what he says about us. It's so good in worship this morning to hear that really as well. God is still on the throne. Hallelujah. His name is invincible. Joshua was encouraged to meditate on the Lord. The next thing, in Joshua 5, we read, read that Joshua met with the Lord. And I just want to read out this encounter that Joshua had uh, before the whole wonderful battle for Jericho. And it says this in verse 13 of uh, chapter 5, verse 13 to 15. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked and behold, a man stood opposite him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, are you for us or our adversaries? So he said, no, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said to him, what does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said, Joshua, take your sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. That sounds familiar as well, doesn't it? Not only did Moses get to do that, but Joshua did too. 
You see, he met with Jesus. We so need to meet with Jesus right now. At this time, when, when all this going on around us, we need to worship, we need to pray, and we need to seek him. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says this, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Psalm 68 verse 1, Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Isaiah 52, Awake, awake, O Zion. Now for those of you who are old enough, I'm pretty sure David will remember this. We used to sing, Awake, awake, O Zion. That was a, a we used to sing a lot of songs that were just full of scripture. In fact, we just sang the scripture. Uh, Stuart Townend and others just put scripture to music. We, we're a little bit more, um, shall I say, these days, where we used to just cry out scripture to God in, in, in the song. New songs are good too, don't get me wrong. But awake, awake, O Zion. It's not time to sleep, but to arise. And I know that lockdown mean person naturally i love to come home from work i still can get out to work because i'm working in empty properties i come home and i want to book my feet up have a little sleep in front of the telly light the fire that's my natural inclination to be quite honest but it's not the time to sleep right now it's the time to arise joshua was being called to arise to be strong and of good courage verse five of the passage i read out earlier no man will be able to stand against you. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. Verse 9, the Lord your God is with you. This is what Joshua is hearing from the Lord. Well, what has Jesus said to us in Scripture? Matthew 16, verse 18. Here it is. Thank you, Eileen, this morning. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Jesus has said that to us. He's saying that to us this morning. Matthew 28, verse 20. I am with you always. Hebrews 13, verse 5. I will never leave you nor forsake you. In everything we are going through at this time, God is with us. Amen? Yeah. Yeah, I wish I could hear the, the, the voices coming back. I tell you what, is this possible? Clayton, can you unmute everybody and can we shout amen? Can you do that? Let's have a go if we can. I don't know if you can. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Amen. I accidentally Amen. muted Amen. you, Steve. Amen. 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 I tried to unmute everybody. It didn't work. <laughs> you're, you're muted. That's my bad. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <clears throat> oh. Can you unmute yourself? Sorry. There we go. Am I unmuted now? Yes. So we've had Moses is dead. It's a new time, time of transition. Trust Joshua has been told to arise. Now he's saying, God is saying to him, I'm going to give you every place that your feet will tread. God is giving Joshua the land that some 40 years earlier, him and Caleb believed God would do anyway. What a long time to wait. He's now just over 100. He was 60, just a bit older than me. And now 40 years on, 101, he's going to do it. There's scripture about Caleb that says, I feel at 80, I feel as strong as I was when I was 40. There's a reason he felt that. He was ready to go for it back then, and he still is. Well, what has God promised us? Habakkuk 2 says this, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Psalm 2, Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for an inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. What wonderful promises. God will have made promises over individuals' lives, You'll be thinking maybe just right now, just think about the things God has promised you. God will have made promises to King's Church Kendall, to Christ Central, to New Frontiers, to the church worldwide. God has made promises, but he's made promises in his word 
but the earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Through Jesus, we can cry out to God for the nations of this world. Kendall is just a drop, a drop in the bucket. We can cry out for the nations. Kendall is just a tiny little thing, a very precious tiny little thing, but just a small thing. We read in Ephesians 1 that we have a hope and a future and an inheritance. God has given us an inheritance. We heard from um, Ed, um, Edmund this morning about the wonderful thing we're going to do. We're going to be going to glory. One day, every eye will be wiped dry. We'll be with the Lord. We have a glorious future promised to us. God has given us so much, so much hope. Every place that our foot will tread. At the moment, I have to admit, it's quite hard to imagine putting our feet even outside the front door. So how do we interpret this verse for the here and the now? Well, Genesis 18 says this, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Jesus is still sending us out, even if it's virtually. I feel this morning, I don't know about you, but I felt our gathering this morning has been like our gatherings on Sunday mornings. I know it's been virtual, but we've had contributions, we've had worship, we've chatted to one another. I know it's virtual, but do you know, there is a benefit in this as well. We can literally reach the whole world from our living rooms. We don't have to get on a plane, a boat. We don't have to travel. It's possible for us to spread the gospel right across the globe this morning. God is opening up new ways, new possibilities. Of course, we want to meet together. It would be so unnatural not to. And we're all hoping for a wonderful Christmas where we can be with friends and and family and i'm trusting the lord for that but also let's not unrealize what god is doing here he's opening up new avenues and new possibilities every place our virtual foot will tread you know if, it, if this had been around in jesus time wow sermon on the mount would have gone even wider even further john 20 verse 21 says this as the father has sent me, I am sending you. So how do we take the land? Well, some ways we're involved in taking the land already are the food bank. The food bank is just one prophetic act of showing compassion and care. Youth work and ministry is still happening. Sometimes it's been able to be in person, sometimes online, but it's still happening reaching those around us. Our small groups can be places where our outreach to our friends can still happen. I actually think it's more likely that somebody would attend online at the moment than come through a door where they might get COVID. There's a real opportunity here to reach out and to reach people who may never come through the door, but might actually be befriended online. I know that um, when you think of just chat, the, uh, the thing that um, oh, Nicola and Matt do, they reach so many people online. And the church maybe just needs to offer gear and realize we can do that as well. We can help. We can be part of reaching the, 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 the place God has given us, that every place our virtual foot treads, we can reach. Another way we can take the land is by prayer. I don't know if um, many people would have seen this. I've not shared it, uh, but um, Joss and Lizzie, our son and daughter-in-law, put up some pictures the other day of uh, our little granddaughter, Rosie. And this time last year, she was just born and she got really seriously ill. And we didn't know whether she would make it to Christmas, but she's just had her first birthday. And we celebrate the answers to prayer. So many of you folks at church prayed for us and for her. And we're so grateful and she's still got a long way to go. But prayer makes a difference. We can pray. It's one way we can take every place. We can take it in prayer. Let's be people of prayer. Those who reach out to the Lord and ask, Lord, give us the nations. Give us Kendall. May your glory fill the earth. How can we practically reach out to people 
when we're locked down and restricted? Well, those are some of the ways. Earlier I shared we're going through a time of transition and change where the world that we live in is changing all around us. We need to be seeking God for his plans for the future. Maybe the way we do things is going to be a little different. That doesn't mean our values change. And again, this morning, the values we hold so dearly were there as we met together, as we're meeting now. But perhaps the way they're going to get outworked for a short while is going to be different. We need to hear from the commander of the Lord's armies. You see, Joshua heard from him about Jericho. And I just want to read out a little bit about this story and uh, see what God says. God gives them clear instructions. So in the, the passage that is uh, relating to Jericho, it says this. Now, Jericho was securely shut up because the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and its mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You should go around the city once. This you should do for six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when you make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people should shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people should go up, every man, straight before him. Wow. Now, does that sound like a military tactic to you? In the Second World War, if they'd told a crack group of uh, soldiers, we want you to march around the land we're going to be taking seven times, uh, or six times rather, and the seventh time you're going to shout and you're going to win. It doesn't sound like much of a military tactic, does it? And to be honest, it wasn't the decibels of the trumpets or the shouting that brought the walls down. It was their obedience to God's plan that brought about the great victory. It was their courage and boldness to follow what God had said that brought the breakthrough. Well, what is God going to ask of us to do as we move forward at this time? Well, I don't really know, if I'm honest. I don't. Well, I know a man who does know, who's unchanging. He's the commander of the army of the Lord. And he will show us the way forward. I'm guessing it might include something like hybrid type meetings like we were doing a few weeks ago. And it would be great to get back to that. Wouldn't be, maybe that might be the next step. Meeting publicly and online. Finding new ways to show compassion. It's going to be some time before people aren't frightened of shaking your hand or have, receiving a hug. It's going to be difficult, but I'm not going to speculate any further. Moreover, can I encourage us to seek the Lord together about the way forward? It's going to involve some change. We know that. But hey, God's people are about change, moving from one thing to the next as we follow the Lord. This is what the Lord said to Joshua at the end of the passage that I read out. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know, Joshua went on to take that land that God had promised. And in the last 10 years of his life, they took the whole lot. God is giving us who knows what to do in the next 10 years? Some of us, it might be the last 10 years. Others, it might be just the next 10 years. None of us know, do we? Well, what did Jesus say to us in similar form? Well, at Matthew 28, the end of, he said this. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you some of the time. No. Lo, I am with you always. Even during COVID, 
he could have said no even to the end of the age whatever happens the lord has promised to be with us and he's calling us to go make disciples we need to hear from him how do we do that in this time of change in this time of transition how do we take the land lord would you speak to us i'm just going to pray I was planning to do a song, but I guess we probably haven't got time for that. But let's just uh, let's come before the Lord and just ask him to come speak to our hearts. Dear Lord Jesus, I, I pray that what I've brought this morning will, one, be challenging, two, be encouraging, and three, just encourage us that you are with us all the way through. Lord, would we be those who know that maybe the past has gone, Moses is dead, but Joshua's alive. I pray maybe these be the days of Joshua for us as we move forward. We pray that we will seek you and that we will take the land, that every place our feet might tread, whether physically or virtually, we would take for Jesus. We pray that we would be encouraged and strong in the Lord. Help us to focus on you and not circumstances around us, but to be bold and courageous and go make disciples. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus. Mm. Amen. Mm. Thanks, Amen. Dave, back to you. Oh, thank you so much, Steve. I guess I just wanted to, on the back of that, just to say thank you and to, to kind of encourage us that 